Did you know that 7-zip isn't just for extracting files from archives like gzips and tars and zip files? You can also extract files and folders from forensic images like a E01 file or a AFF file. In this video, we will be looking at using 7-zip with a special plugin to extract data out of forensic images. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button and help me find my 80s girl. I'm sure that most of you already know that 7-zip is a very popular free tool and an open source tool for packing and compressing files and folders into archives. If you don't already have it, you can download it from the link in the description below. Today we're going to be using it to do something that most people are not familiar with, and that's to use it to read forensic images. In order to do this, we are going to be using a special plugin called Forensic 7Z, and you need to download it via the link in the description below. So here you see that I'm on the tc4shell.com website where the plugin can be downloaded. So here you can see on the web page the features of the program and the file formats that it knows how to read, uh, which is the more common ones, uh, E01s, AFFs, AD zeros, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom. And once we downloaded the file, we can see that the bundle contains three files, a 64-bit DLL, a 32-bit DLL, and then the readme file. So in order to install the bundle and make it work with 7-zip, all we need to do is go to where 7-zip is installed on your system, which is usually on your C drive, and then in the program data folder, and then the 7-zip folder. Once here, I'm going to use the file explorer to create a new folder named formats with a capital F. Then I'm going to drag the two DLL files that I downloaded into this formats folder. And that's it. So now to demonstrate how this works, I'm going to launch 7-zip. Then go ahead and find a E01 image that I acquired from before. And here we are with this image set from a HP laptop from a Magnet Forensics CTF. Notice that I just have to point to the first segment of the E01 file, and then 7-zip with the plugin knows to read all of the other segments. And you can actually point to any of the other segments, and the Forensic 7-Z is pretty smart and can figure it out. So after a quick read of the E01, we see that there is now a IMG file here. The file really isn't here uh, in the file system, but it's just a virtual representation of that data inside the E01. From here, we can click into that IMG file, and we can see that the partitions that are in that E01. In this example, we see four partitions. We can see the name of each of the partitions, its size, the file system on that partition, uh, any characteristics, and then the byte offset for that partition, and lastly, the U UUID of that partition. And I'm going to select the basic data partition, which is the largest partition, and I'm assuming that to be the primary data drive for the laptop. And so after about a fraction of a second, 7-zip shows me the content of that partition, which as suspected is the C drive of the laptop. As I can see, uh, documents and settings folder, the program files folder, users, and then the Windows folder, etc. So for each file or folder, we not only get the name and size and timestamp, we also get a whole bunch of other file system related information, which you may or may not care about but I'm going to click around the file system to see what's on here. So for each object like the IMG or partition or file, we can click the info button up here and see more detail of that object. So for this particular file, the info panel shows us the file-based information like the name, the size, timestamps, attributes, and then file system info like the inode numbers. 
Then in this middle section here, it is the information of the folder where the file was located. So in this case, the file is from the folders uh, slash user slash Patrick slash download where there are eight files and zero subfolders totaling about 343 megs of data. And in this last section, it gives us the information of the image from where the file was located. All right, so I'm gonna go back all the way back up to the top level where we see the IMG file. And let's take a look at the info for this file. So we get the name, the size of the image, and the MD5 hash of that image. So that's useful. And then in the last block here, we see that this IMG file is from a E01 file with the acquisition date, the tool used. In, uh, in this case, it was a uh, Gimager. And then the platform where it was used, it says 5.4.0. So this is some kind of a Ubuntu build. And then lastly, the device model and serial number. So it looks to me like it was some kind of a 256 gig SSD, which matches the size of the image, so that's good. Moving down one level to the partitions, I'm gonna look at the partition named three. The info panel shows that this is a 633 megabytes Windows recovery partition. And then let's go ahead and look at the big partition here. We see that it's a 255 gig Windows ba basic data partition. And that's about it, nothing, nothing too interesting here. Now that we can see the files inside the E01, we can also extract files that you're interested in. And you can extract at whatever level you want. So if I select the big partition, I can extract the entire thing as one file. But let's drill down and grab specific files or folders. I'm gonna look into Patrick's download folder and choose the notes.txt file. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that file and then click on the extraction button. A pop-up panel comes up that allows you to select where you wanna extract the files to. So let me just go ahead and use a slider here and select it to go to the desktop. And then I can go and find another file of interest. Again, extract it out to the desktop. And now let's go find some pictures here in the pictures slash phones or phone photo folder. And then extract them out. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the ellipsis here or the three dots to the right to make a new folder on the desktop to extract the files to. And once we're done extracting, we can verify that by going to the File Explorer and then to that folder we just created. And then here we see the extracted files. All right, so that was a E01 container. Now let's see if we can see the contents of a AD1 container. So again, from 7-zip, I am gonna go ahead and find a AD1 image that I created earlier and point to any of the segments and then the Forensic 7Z plugin will figure it out and open the AD1 container properly. We can click down into the file tree. One thing I did not mention earlier is that one advantage of 7-zip is that you can double click on any file uh, to take a look at it and it will try to open it with Windows using the associated tools. Okay, so here it gives me some options. And lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at a AFF container. And then once I open the folder, we see the AFF segments, and then I can select any segment and we can see inside the container. As mentioned earlier, if I cl double click on this uh, .c file, my Windows machine will allow me to open the file in a bunch of different tools, but the primary one it recommends is Visual Studio Code and it displays the C code in a very nice format. So this is definitely something nice that FTK Imager does not offer. So using 7-zip along with the Forensic 7-Z plugin, we can open up and see the contents of forensic images. However, note that 7-zip is not able to create forensic image files so that you will still need to rely on things like FTK Imager or X-Ways or Linux tools to create those. 
but this is a quick and easy ways for those who are already familiar with 7-Zip and don't want to learn another tool like FTK Imager to read forensic images. It does have specific perks like opening up specific files within Windows using associated programs. So just another tool for your tool belt. For more information on Windows forensic tools, watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.